Hey everybody and welcome back to more CCLP2. We are on Block Away, which is level 21. And as I mentioned at the end of the last video, this level was designed by Dave Borgman. And I want to say that uh, pressing the buttons here is going to clone some blocks up there. Um, and, okay, we do want to release the balls. Um, I want to see you can just blaze through all of this here without any problem. Let's try this out. Okay, you do have to wait for that one. All right, I do remember the bold route requiring that. I, it's been a while since I've executed the bold route for this level, so I don't really quite remember it, but we'll figure it out. We'll make it through this. Oh wait, no, I didn't take that little two-move detour there, so, okay. So I guess it's the second one that you have to wait for. Tell you what, let's not even take any chances. I'm just going to press the green button twice and we'll call it a day. Like that. There we go. That's the safer route because I do want to get through this Let's Play at a reasonable pace. So I don't believe that that button is a good thing. Uh, I think that's actually a bad thing. And this is kind of like a Telenet style room. Um, get some keys here. There is, I believe, one extra key in this level, but yeah, if you had press that button, you'd have all these gliders going like crazy, which is not a good thing. And then you have a bunch of keys here with these tanks, so a little dodging here to spice things up a bit. And then we have the exit. Um, this is one of the most evil things, I think, in CCLP2. You have this empty section here, too, which is kind of fun. But um, you'll notice that there's all these doors here. Almost all these have traps underneath them. So if you open them up, you'll get trapped. But there's a path that goes through there um, where you can go like that and exit. And those are the only doors that have floor under them. So yeah, that's pretty evil. Um, I suppose you could sort of figure it out once you get that bottom row um, underway that you do need to kind of make a little detour at the end based on the keys you have left. But still, you have one extra key. So that does still make things rather um, ambiguous a little bit. But anyway, the next level, this is How Goes. It's also designed by Ann Olson. And it's a pretty strange level. Like, I, it's a blue wall maze, but you get this chip collecting thing in the very beginning here, and it's kind of fascinating. But it's also a very... Uh, interesting time crunch challenge as well because you have to get through this blue wall maze and you don't have a lot of time and I don't remember exactly um, what the route is either so we're gonna have to figure that out and I forgot you can go touch the border on this because this is CCLB2 and a lot of people didn't care about that so yeah so I didn't really mention how the procedure for CCLP2 went as far as voting was concerned in the last video because uh, I had all those introductions uh, that I spent like eight minutes on. I was watching them like eight minutes, man. I I hope I don't have to do that ever again. But I just wanted to make sure I got all the you know where have I been stuff out of the way. But yeah, the um, this level or this set, um, there really weren't a whole lot of levels that were released at the time. But there was talk of a custom level set that needed that people wanted to have produced, and um, this was basically. Uh, what people agreed on was, you know, we'll vote on the merits of each individual level and we'll see what ultimately makes it in. And that's pretty much uh, what was decided on. And even if designers didn't give permission for their levels to be included in the set, they were still voted on, you know. So um, it was pretty much decided after the voting, you know, they were thinking, well, you know, maybe a designer will show up in the middle of all this and we can get the permission then. But there were a couple designers in particular that missed that who would have gotten levels in the set otherwise. And it's kind of sad because there are definitely a few levels in that mix that I would have loved to have seen in this, uh, particularly the ones by David Pinkston. He did get uh, a few levels, I believe, in CCLP3, if I'm not mistaken. But still, it was kind of a little bit of a bummer. But anyway, voting happened, and it was just basically the top 149 levels that got put in. You know, no qualifiers, nothing like that. Just the top 149 whose designers gave permission for the levels to be included. 
Um, I think there may have been some levels that the CCLB2 staff eliminated from consideration because they were like, okay, this is awesome, and, you know, we could include this in CCLB3, you know, and that kind of presupposed that those people would even still be around to give permission for those levels to be included. Uh, but, you know, CCLB3 had its own voting process and everything, so it didn't quite work out that way. Anyway, this is Traps 1. It's kind of the Sokoban tutorial of the set, and it's a pretty fun level. I really like it. And we are done. Moving on to Sudden Death. Remember. Yeah, you need to remember that that has some fire underneath it. Um, and so that was bad timing. Okay, let me remember that the tanks don't really move super fast, so that, that might help. So yeah, this level, it's not really a hard level. It's um, also designed by Dave Borgman as well, um, as was Traps 1, I believe. And let's get a green key here, not too bad. And we get some chips here. So yeah, pretty, pretty decent level. Um, I can wait here. I guess I didn't need to take the risk of that blob. And let's go back and get the last chip, and then we'll be out of here. This level, by the way, if you're playing in Lynx, the Lynx version of this level, this level is ridiculous to optimize. It is really ridiculous to optimize. In fact, this was probably one of the longest unconfirmed bolds in CCLP2. Uh, and I forgot it's actually here. Come on, Blob. There you go. There you go. Sudden Death is done. Now time for Race for the Chips. And this is a really fun level by Kyle Whiteman, um, who had a few levels in this set. And most of those levels that he submitted were kind of like sequels. Like he, he made a level called York House 2 and a Scoundrel 2 and, you know, just stuff like that. But this is one of his original compositions that wasn't really based on a concept from CC1. And I gotta say, as far as ideas go, this level has some really killer ideas. Uh, and that was bad. I should not have done that. That was terrible. Uh, okay, let's not make that mistake again. But yeah, this level just, it's a really neat concept because it really forces you to think in terms of movements and just making sure that you're one step ahead of that teeth. And it really does get your muscles, you know, in terms of just moving around in this game. It really gets you in the mood. Uh, let me go back up here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, I know that there's a there's a method you can use to do this, and I think it's something like this. I know there's a faster way to do this, but I'm just gonna do that method because it's pretty fun and not very harm and not. It doesn't really do. It doesn't really waste that much time. Okay. I know there's probably a better way to do this. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, this section is pretty simple. Because he's just going to chase you, and then you can just get him into the nooks every other time there. Anyway, so that's Race for the Chips. Really fun level. Really enjoyed a lot. And we are done. Moving on to Work Fast. I think this level is trying to tell you in the title that it has a time limit that's uh, not exactly huge or anything, but really, it's not that much of a time crunch. Then we just got a little block pushing area here and some gliders, and then we're done, pretty much. That's it. So we worked pretty fast. We were able to escape, which was sweet. And we got the bold time at that, so awesome. For Frozen Floors. This level is a blast. It is also a tough boosting challenge. You can tell I'm just failing right here like crazy. Uh, you also have to override a lot of force floors too in this big maze. Uh, and that was a total fail because I don't remember how to get around. <laughs> I really don't remember much about this level except that it's hard to get the bolt on it. 
Um, trying to remember how to get down there. Okay, here we go. This is promising. There we go. I, that would not have worked in Lynx, but it's good enough for here. In fact, I'm pretty sure that backwards boosting is actually necessary in this version of the level. So, And I know I have to go down there, so let me go back. That was silly. There we go. And now we can exit. So yeah, pretty fun level. Um, it definitely is a nice take on the ice maze. Because, I mean, remember, at this time, people didn't really have many ice mazes to choose from. So you, adding force floors to your ice maze was really cool. And I think that was by Dave Borgman, as is this level, Madness 1. Uh, this is um, kind of an interesting level because this is the first series level, if you want to call it that, in this uh, set. And you'll notice throughout the course of the set that levels that are part of a series always have a Roman numeral in front of them. You'll recall that CC1 didn't do that. CC1 just had, you know, the title and then the sequel had a 2 in front of it, like Blockbuster and Blockbuster 2. This game didn't really do that, so it's interesting to note that. Uh, so it's also our first uh, introduction to a partial post as well, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, fire and water is the next level. And I think there's fire boots. Yeah, here's fire boots here. This is by David Stanley, who unfortunately didn't really have many levels uh, submitted. But this is one that I really like. Uh, it's, I, in my opinion, this is underrated. Because this feels like a level that, w that came straight out of CC1. Like, it just has that simplistic design. It's not too hard. The reason why the fireball stopped cloning is because we blocked up that clone machine, and each of the buttons clones a fireball in another machine, so... Uh, oh, okay, so that didn't really make a difference. So anyway, that's pretty much it for that level. It's, it's a fun one, I think, and a pretty easy challenge. And Chase Race is the next one. And uh, the hint here says there are very few safe spots here for Chip, chip to stop at. Keep on running. This uh, level introduces monster chases into the game and is a lot of fun. Uh, I suppose Nightmare did that for the original game, level 70, but this level I feel like is more dedicated to that idea than Nightmare was. It does feature a lot of very long hallways, which ultimately in my mind makes Nightmare the better level of the two, but it's very effective at keeping you on your toes because of that, because of the length of the hallways. So, all in all, because the design is pretty simple, there's no, you know, oh, you have to twist and zigzag tons and tons of times kind of situations. It's pretty easy to um, keep track of where you need to go, and the fact there are monsters dodge and stuff, so pretty nice. And here we have a teeth cloner. It's going to give us a little bit of grief, but thankfully not too much. Just going to be the teeth hanging around. You'll just have to get them to chase you all the way down. To, for some reason I thought I had the suction boots there um, all the way down to the left side and they're going to keep cloning each other essentially so let's just make a run for it and well they're going to die so it's not even going to make that much of a difference anyway but this is the big long uh, chase at the end is this bug he's just going to follow us through this uh, long zigzaggy hallway so pretty simple overall This was also designed by Kyle Whiteman, and again, it's another one of his original concepts. I don't think he had a level in the set that was a sequel type level, or at least a level that he intended as a sequel. And whoa, 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 I'm supposed to go the other way. This way, here we go. Okay. And we cut through another ice corner here and go to the exits. So that was fun, chase race complete. Moving on to Well of Wishes. Um, this is another Tyre Thawi Ansrath level, and oddly enough, another typo level, because it didn't have an E at the end uh, in its original version. But uh, it's a really fun level. Like, I really like this level a lot. It's one of my favorite levels in this whole set, actually. And it just does such a good job of taking an idea and just extending it. See... I'm one of those people who thinks that if you're going to make a, a level that's thematically linked to something, you really need to you know, develop it in an interesting way so that it won't get old. Right? And, and that's if you're taking up the whole map. Um, 
So like if you're introducing an idea in your levels and you're going to take up the whole map, you really need to keep that idea or that theme or whatever it is fresh. And this level does a good job of being fresh. Um, like it has all these things involving blocks and water and everything, and somehow it just never feels old. Like all this stuff just works. It's it's so well crafted, and each room just feels like a mini level in it, in of itself, and it's very strong because of that. I think. So uh, I probably should have gone to the other side first, but I think there was a tank over here, so. That really wouldn't have made too much of a difference from a time perspective. and I don't think there are any other ships other than that one. So I'm just going to leave. Well, I can't come back here. So, yeah, that's it. I just want to be on the safe side with respect to that. And loop around over here and then push this in place. Okay, so now we can head to the exit. So yeah, this is this is a fun tire folly level, definitely a favorite of mine. Um, Josh Lee, who is a very prolific level designer, made a level based on the wall structure of this level called Beautiful Struggle. It's in the level set Josh L5, and I highly recommend it. It's such a good level. Anyway, uh, Teleportion is the next one. This level was created by Rolf Redford, and um, it's a level that kind of teaches you partial posting, sort of. And I think that was a mistake. No, it wasn't. Okay, good. Okay, where's this gonna go? I don't remember a whole lot about this level, so I'm. I don't believe that that was right because I don't remember this long slide being in the bold route. Uh, yeah, this was kind of pointless. I'm really worried about where this is going. Yeah, okay, that was totally, totally dumb. Um, this way. Okay, so I'm going to start partial posting here. And, well, that's a bomb explosion. But um, I think I need to go over here to... There we go. So I'm going to try this way first, just see how this goes. Okay, that didn't do anything, so let's try this way next. Ah, there we go. Made it. Okay, so now I think... There we go. We got out. Teleportion complete. It's kind of confusing, but still a pretty fun level. The big button quest. So that was wrong. I believe, yes, this is the correct path. This was the first level made by Christian Stahl, I believe was his name. And it involves some guesswork, which uh, is not really something I enjoy. And... Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, you have to make sure that, that there, there's a ball that's in the center of the level and it's uh, making those tank switch and there's toggle doors on the sides. So by pressing that toggle button twice, I trap the ball in an area where it won't ever hit that button. You can, however, hear another button being pressed and we're going to be dealing with that here soon enough. And it's that trap button right there. So this level, a lot of Christian levels involve very long hallways. They're not really my favorite levels, mainly for that reason. Not to mention they don't really have much aesthetic value. But there are some of them that are legitimately fun. And I do enjoy them uh, for being fun. You also notice there's an invisible wall there. And that's the exit, so that was a waste of time. So we need to get a red key first. So let's go to the other side and see what we have. And we have a nice slide. There's the ball I mentioned earlier. Uh, the path below just goes to that invisible wall, so I'm not going to worry about that. I don't want to waste time because I don't want to have to wait for the ball to come back up again. Since it was already on the upward part of the cycle. So yeah, that was the big button quest. Not exactly a big quest, but it did involve buttons. And we exited. Moving on to Cypher 2. Dear Chip, in some ways this will be the most important level for you. So Cypher, Chip, Cypher. Secretly Melinda. 
All right, so this level uh, is a very special level in CCLP2 uh, for one, mainly one reason, and that is that it's not exactly um, totally based on its original um, submitted level. It was created by Dale Bryan, uh, who was the staff coordinator for CCLB2, and there was a level that was called Cypher 2 in his set. Um, by the way, these blocks are just cloners, so you can't even push them. You can only push the ones I move to the buttons. Um, but anyway, the... Um, what was I trying to say here? This level was... Um, uh, modified to fit a password used here in CCLP2. And uh, he also got his niece named uh, Sarah Canal to help design a section in the lower right corner, uh, which we'll see here at the end. But yeah, the original level, if you look at the original level, it's quite different. So I actually kind of like the fact that he got changed, because I do like this level quite a bit. Not really my favorite level. I mean, I'm not typically a level a fan of invalid tile levels, but this one manages to be pretty awesome, even though it is really tricky to figure out what the letters that you're spelling out are exactly. And you'll notice by now that uh, um, the uh, letters spell out only one password. So uh, there aren't three passwords like the ciphers uh, in the other sets. But that's all right. And here's the last one which is another interesting one. And here's where things get really fascinating because here, I'm just gonna uncover these. There's a tank and a cloner and a, you also have, there's also a trap that you have to hold down there as well. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit the clone button first so that the bomb gets blown up by the block and not the tank. Move that there and then open this up for the tank to come through. And yes, you can turn tanks around in traps, which is pretty nifty. And, oh, we don't have all the chips. Did I forget chips? Oh, don't tell me I forgot chips in another room. Ugh, that's annoying. Okay, so apparently I forgot chips in another room. That's not good. So let's try this again. It must be the A room, because I know I got everything in the other ones. I'm trying to move along with this with 30 minute videos, and I really want to get to level 40 in this video too. I feel like the first video could have been shorter if I didn't have the big long intro at the beginning, but you know, I felt like that was more important than actually diving right into the game after being away for so long. Okay, so there we go with that room. Let's try this one. Part of what's tripping me up is that I have recently optimized this in Lynx, and so everything is... I'm thinking of this level in Lynx terms, which really I shouldn't be. Okay, what am I missing? Was it those ones down there? Because I thought I got those last time. Was it those? It may have been those. I, I want to say I got these. Alright, let's go down here. Get all this done. This is a fun section. And there's no chips here to collect except uh, this and the one over there. So nothing under the box, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I think we should be in a good position to take on this room. Maybe they're just on the corners. Maybe that's where they were and I was just missing them the whole time. I'm just gonna try to uncover everything. See, this is why I don't like invalid tiles. Like, I, I just don't like this sort of hiding things just for fun. Because really, I mean, blue wall mazes, you could argue that yes, there is a similar element of you gotta try all the things, but even so, oh wait, I got all the chips. But even so, you're doing so knowing that there is an element of predictability. Like, you are going to uncover floor only, you know, in normal chips challenge. And, um, 
And that's it. You know, here, you can uncover pretty much anything. I mean, you saw just the variety of stuff that we found under there. So it is kind of a little bit exciting, admittedly, you know, because who knows what's under those things. But it's also irritating when it can be used to just do cheap tricks and just cause you to die silly in silly ways. Anyway, Mirror is the next level, and this is a really cool level and one that I like a lot, and that was a dumb thing to do. Um, this level is based on the icon for Microsoft Chip's Challenge, uh, if you're familiar with that. It's the one of Chip running across kind of like a dirt-looking surface. It's pretty awesome. I like it a lot. And it makes for a really cool level. Like, normally, see, there's this kind of debate that's kind of come up in the Chip's Challenge world about these sorts of what I like to call mosaic levels. Personally, I think these levels are pretty cool. I, I like them a lot. But I have to say that with a caveat that, you know, when it comes to a game like this, I'm one of those people who believes that art for art's sake is not necessarily the best thing. Like, I'm a gameplay first kind of guy. And, whoa, that was close. I, I want to be safe when I get this. There we go. Um, and there are certain pieces of artwork for Chip's Challenge that just lend themselves well to levels, and I had to say this is one of those types of levels. There are some that, you know, you really have to bend over backwards in order to make them work, and I'm not the biggest fan of those. So it is really kind of a, a tough balancing act. And speaking of which, here's another one. Uh, that was by Paul Hobden, by the way. This is called Spy, and this is based on the Microsoft uh, Thief Tile. And this is a really cool level because it's got this maze built into it where you have to go around this ice, you know, blue wall, and then there's like this teleport section and these checkered parts of the chips. Like, you can make a really cool maze out of this, and it just works so well. Um, and I'm not opposed to that, but if, you know, you're just filling up the level with random stuff just to help flesh out the artwork... You know, yeah, it looks cool. I don't deny that. And I'm not trying to knock on the level for being a piece of artwork. But as a piece of gameplay, which is ultimately what I play the game for, you know, if it's not up to snuff, you know, it's not really something that I'm probably going to like very much. Because to me, gameplay is king. So that's just my personal perspective on that. It's not, you know, I'm not saying that everything has to be that or anything like that. But it's just my point of view, so take it with a grain of salt if you want. And here's the final part. I'm going to go around this way. See, so yeah, this is the thief's mouth or mustache or whatever you want. Oh, wait, no, these are his eyes. Never mind. I think this is his eye. And then down here is his mouth area. Mouth area. That sounds cool. Okay, so let's go back over here. Way off the bolt for that, but I wasn't really trying. The Mystery of the Seven Ships. Oh, and that was terrible. And that was also terrible. Let's be smarter about this. Okay, so now it's in a consistent rhythm. This is another Christian stall level. The previous level was by a Tired Thalianserath again. Um, and... I want to say I need to let this guy go because I need to be able to get back through that passage when I get through there. It's kind of a, a nasty trick if you're not going to explore that area first, but it's a necessary thing to do. So notice that wall of stuff over there. That's going to be important here in a minute. Okay, I'm just going to try to go up whenever possible because I don't think there is a teleport that's ever blocked from the up direction. Okay, so we got the seven ships. Not much of a mystery there. Okay, I think that's all, everything. So, if I'm not mistaken, there's nothing... Whoa, there's a glider there. I don't think there's anything over there, though. But you'll see here this wall of tanks I pointed out earlier, that the exit's there. So we have to get the... Why did I do that? We have to get the tanks stopped, is the objective of this. Again, Christian loves filling out all this space with long hallways. There are certain situations where I don't mind this, but I'm one of those people who believes that if you're filling out something, in like the space in a level, then it's not necessarily that you have to use it for stuff. Like I'm one of those people who's not a 
you know, you have to absolutely use this for things or it's bad. Because, I mean, I don't believe that good level design is, you know, uh, hinges on that sort of thing. You know, I believe that good level design is good gameplay and is fun, and the aesthetics of it contribute to the joy of exploring and just having a good time. So I'm not really a stickler for that sort of stuff. But, you know, uh, there we go, got it. So now the Paramecium will never hit the blue button. But, you know, there are some designers out there who do like this because, you know, when you have a big map to fill, you, and it's 32 by 32 by default, and there's nothing that you can use to scale it down by default. Uh, like, you can't really just say, oh, I'm just going to cut this off, and you can't ever see it when you're playing. Then you, It's kind of hard to not feel obligated to use the space. And that's one reason why I appreciate the fact that Ships Challenge 2 does not have that. Like, in Ships Challenge 2, you can set the map size. And so if you're a designer like me who likes to plan things out, then that's good news. Because I think setting the map size is important. So I'm, I'm thankful that Ships Challenge 2 has that as a, f a feature. Mads Rush 1 complete. This was an Ant Olsen level, and it's a pretty fun just escape everything level. Yikomatic. This is a level by Eric Schmidt. And it's one of the... I remember this was one of the first custom levels I played. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, you shouldn't go in there because those are invisible walls. And let's beat all these balls down. And let's see, there's an area here with a toggle button and some flippers. So I'm going to hit this an odd number of times. Push this down. And I'm just going to make sure that this fireball can just toggle stuff indefinitely because we're going to need that. What you need is Sphery Hot. That's a really clever hint. I, I really like that hint a lot. And now the fireball has a bit of a period where nothing happens at all. And Wait, did I just mess that up? Oh, wait, I forgot I had to move the block to another spot, and that was stupid. Okay. Why did I do that? That was really dumb. Sorry, guys, that was silly. I don't know what I was thinking with that. Okay, let's try this again, this time hopefully with less failure. I said less failure. <laughs> this is what I get for rushing. but It makes for, for an entertaining video, so I'm not too mad about that. That's one thing that I'm trying to work on as a, a content creator, is to just kind of have fun with the failures, not really be too hard on myself for them. Because you really got to laugh at yourself when you're an LP or you know you just gotta roll with the punches and just go with the flow so I'm trying to do that more okay let's do this right this time so get this there okay now I'm gonna put this block over here okay now the fireball will, will toggle indefinitely so that's that's helpful okay I think it's in its kind of not doing anything phase, and now it's coming back, so. We entered at a pretty good time, I think. Okay, and now it's just gonna go through that little period of nothing. And now some of these paths are, or these uh, toggle wall bits are getting a little bit longer. Or I guess it was just these two right here. And I think that's the bold time, if I'm not mistaken. So Yikomatic done. Traps 2 is next. Uh, this is the sequel to Traps 1, and it's also created by Dave Borgman, so that's pretty neat. Uh, it's a really, really easy Sokoban. In fact, I'd have to say I think this is actually easier than the original because you got all this open space to deal with, whereas the original, you barely had any room. I mean, you still had, it was still pretty open for a Sokoban, but this one, I mean, you got even way more room than you ever had there. This is also one of the levels that had uh, a bold time that eventually got beaten after a long time, along with the next level, which was even more the case. So yeah, pretty cool just how that happens sometimes. Really fun challenge, though. Just a nice breather after the last level, because I gotta admit, if you don't know what you're doing, 
intimidating. And especially if you're not really familiar with monster manipulation, that fireball thing at the end. I remember that, well, the first time I saw that, that actually took me a while. Like, I, I didn't get that for a while. But uh, thankfully, this is a nice breather, and we are done with traps too. We're, we're going to move on to the next uh, several levels in the next video, guys. So once again, this has been a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying being back and recording these again. So thank you once again for watching and supporting the channel and, and everything you guys do. Um, I'll catch you on the flip side, so take care, and I'll see you then.